Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Chevy Silverado 2500, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Aries motorized running boards. But before we get into that, why don't we take a minute, check these out and make sure uh, they're gonna work for you. With these trucks getting bigger and bigger now, you know, some people have a hard time getting in and out of them. Uh, and that's the case with our neighbor here today. His wife has a hard time jumping up into the big truck and getting out and everything else. And just a regular, you know, fixed type uh, running board just wasn't cutting it for him. And uh, even asking the dealer about motorized ones it just wasn't a viable option. And so uh, this is a perfect solution for him. You know, when you open up the door, it drops down quite a bit and really gets it, uh, you know, a lot lower to the ground, makes it a lot more manageable to get in and out. And uh, I've done quite a few uh, powered uh, running boards like this in the past. Some of them not that great. They're just kind of wonky. You know, they just don't really work how you want them to. And that's not the case with these. Uh, I believe this is my second set, second or third set I've done. Uh, I had uh, a Ram in here a few weeks ago, put a very similar set on, you know, the Aries, and I'm pretty impressed with them. You know, they fit really good. Um, they operate how you'd expect them to. You know, they come out fast and go up good um, and work how you'd, how you'd want them to. I do want to mention, because we see this a lot, um, if these interest you and you want to pick some up, be sure to use the drop-down menu in our fit guide and make sure you, you know, enter in the right information as far as what kind of truck you have because a crew cab or, you know, a extended cab, all the different cab lengths make a difference in terms of you know, how long the step's going to be. So, you know, just double check that. That way you get what you need uh, the first time. But with that said, you know, since he's dropped down quite a ways, uh, even on the lift that we're parked on, it makes it pretty manageable. You know, I'd say it cuts that distance in half probably. And in terms of stability, these are rated for 650 pounds. Um, I'm probably a little short of 200 pounds and super solid. Um, you know, I'd feel comfortable having two grown men get in and out of the truck at the same time um, on this step. In terms of how far this is actually going to come down, on our truck, uh, which I believe is all all stock, you know, it don't look like we have bigger tires or nothing. With the lift being the ground, if this were parked on the ground, you know, uh, the top of the step is gonna be at 11 inches. So cuts that distance down quite a bit. You know, you lift your uh, foot up about a foot and, and you're on there. Um, in terms of, you know, a couple small things, uh, this is all metal, you know, there's no plastic or nothing. Um, to dry rot or crack or anything. And it has some pretty thick tread uh, in it as well. So, you know, help you get a sure footing whenever you're getting in and out of the truck. Steps do come with uh, an LED on each side too, which I think is cool. You know, it's a nice touch whenever you open the door and the step drops down, that light turns on and uh, just throws a little bit of light out there and uh, helps you see a little bit better. This does have a system built into it too. If it detects any, you know, pressure or anything like that, the step is going to stop. So I'll just put a piece of wood here and close the door. And when it goes up, all right, it stops it and the motor stops and it just kind of keeps it like that. It's not going to keep trying to jam and, 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 you know, force that step up and damage your step or whatever you left in there, whether it be you know, block of wood or your foot, you know, if, if someone got the door closed on it. Um, and then to kind of reset it, so to speak, open it, comes down, close it again, and goes right back up into position. And the same holds true for the downward swing as well. So if you happen to park next to, you know, a weird curb or a sewer or something like that, maybe some rock or anything, and you go to open that door up, if it feels that pressure, it'll stop and, uh, you know, prevent, prevent any damage from happening. They do come with a switch, uh, which can power the running boards off and on. Um, something I've noticed, though, it seems like this LED stays on all the time um, if it's, you know, on the on position. Um, you know, so if you're going to be parking the truck for a while or something, might not be a bad idea just to turn them off so that light turns off. If it bothers you, you know, is it going to drain the batteries? Probably not. It's a tiny LED, but... Just something I noticed. 
But, you know, the, the fact that you are able to power these off and on easily, I think kind of overrides that. So, you know, if you're underneath the truck servicing it or got it on a, a two post lift or anything, you know, you can turn them off and get in and out or underneath the truck and not have to worry about, you know, the boards constantly uh, going down and, and coming back up. In terms of the appearance, you know, I think they look pretty good. Um, sometimes with these, these aftermarket running boards, they can kind of look cheesy in my opinion, and that's not really the case at all with these. A uh, really clean look, and I think it's a good addition to the truck, you know. Don't look out of place by any means. Um, but other than that, at the end of the day, you know, if you're not wanting to go the uh, factory uh, motorized running board option, um, this would be a, a great solution. Uh, for you to to be able to have uh, this type of upgrade. As far as the installation goes, actually getting the uh, running board and the brackets on was really straightforward. These are custom fit. Uh, essentially, they just bolt right up. In terms of the wiring and stuff, it's it's really not confusing. It's actually a really nice kit. All the ends are already put together for you, and more or less plug and play. It just takes some time to route everything. You know, you got to go under the carpet in some uh, areas and and uh you know stuff like that so set aside a little bit of time and uh, as long as you stay focused you should be in pretty good shape but if you'd like to see how uh how we did it feel free to hang around we'll go ahead and get started on now to begin our installation we're going to be here on the side of our truck and we need to mount up our brackets and these are all going to be the same bracket so you don't need to worry about you know side specific or getting them mixed up or anything like that but we're going to have three spots that these are going to mount up one will be in the front, the other one will be uh, kind of in the middle, but more towards the front, so right here in this area, and then the back one uh, here towards the rear. But why don't we go right up underneath our rocker and uh, get that done. We're going to start with the front. So on our rocker, there's several threaded wall nuts. These are the ones we're going to be using for the front. I do suggest just taking a tube brush and, and maybe some penetrating oil and spraying those out if they're dirty. I'll just get any dirt out of there. The way the brackets are going to work, they're going to line up with those weld nuts like that. And then you can take a bolt, a split lock washer, and a flat washer. This hardware is going to be the same for all of our brackets. But you're going to want to put on some of this uh, anti-seize on the threads that they give you. So I did that on, on all our bolts there. And we're just gonna get, get these started hand tight. Continuing towards the back of the truck, we have one set of holes and then a second set. We're gonna be using the second set and we'll repeat that same process to, uh, to get this bracket loosely installed as well. And the back bracket is going to go into the set of holes closest to the very end of our cab. And with all these loosely in place, uh, we're going to repeat this same process on the other side of our truck. And matter of fact, anything we do to one side, we're also going to do to the other because it'll all be set up the same. Now we can grab our step. And there's going to be this T-track in here, and you want to take three of the T-rails, I believe they're called, and just slide them right in. And then we're going to roughly position them where they'll line up with their brackets. Just for reference, the uh, end of the step that has the connector plug coming out of it, that's going to be towards the back of the truck. So we'll just kind of roughly space these out and uh, uh, get it sorted. Now with the help from Chris here, we can grab our motorized step and get it uh, placed onto our brackets. So on the top of the step, there's almost like a little catch or a track here. And this is gonna set on top of the bracket, kind of roll into it. And the way we're gonna put this on, we'll kind of get it on that first and then line up our hardware. So you kind of roll it on and you want your bolts to go through the bracket and then you're going to take a flat washer and a nylon lock nut and get all these started hand tight. What you're able to do now is you're able to kind of slide our step front to back and adjust it how you want. Um, and this kind of just preference on 
you know, what you think looks good and it'll be the most functional. Um, since these steps kind of tend to swing out towards the back some, I like to put ours a little bit closer to the front. Uh, that way it gives us a little bit bigger stepping area when we're getting in and out of the truck. So uh, I got it positioned how I want it. And now we can get everything tightened up. We're going to use a 13 millimeter uh, to snug everything up. You want to do the brackets, you know, attaching to the actual truck first. I like to start in the middle, work my way out, and then we'll come back, do the same thing for the hardware holding on the step. Before you tighten down the uh, very last bolt here at the back, holding the step onto the bracket. You wanna take your LED and the little bracket that they give you, pop that in, and we'll take the nut off, slide that over it. Get it going again. Then we can kind of position it uh, how we want it to shine. At this point, we need to come back with our torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in our instructions. Now you can move underneath your hood uh, and we can start to get everything wired up. Um, so we're on the driver's side and we need to hook up the power and ground wire. So you'll pop this cover off, all right? Then take the fuse out of the included fuse holder and this is just a length of wire already pre-set up, maybe a few feet long, but you're gonna have this post here on the positive terminal. You can remove that nut with a 10 millimeter, just slide the power wire over it, tighten it down. Essentially the same holds true for our ground wire. This black one, pre-attached terminal, pull the nut off with a 10, tighten it back down. Like I said, the fuse we'll put in at the very end when we're ready to power everything up. But that's gonna set like that. And what I did is just take a drill bit and kind of round out an opening there on this cover. That way, uh, you know, we can put it back on and it'll close up nice and, and uh, stay sealed. Now that we're hooked up to the battery, we need to route the end of that wire into the engine compartment. And bear with us here, because uh, it's difficult to see for sure to get around all this stuff. But if you look, Essentially, back from the battery on the firewall, there's going to be a big rubber grommet with some factory wires, a big bundle running through there. And on that, there's going to be a, kind of like a rubber nipple. And if you cut the end of that off, there's a factory opening. You can take your wires and feed them through there uh, where they'll come out of the bottom of the dashboard inside the truck. Now, underneath our dash where our wire's going to come through, you know, a quick pointer too, it's impossible to see where that wire comes out you feed it through there sometimes you can spray soapy water on it on that grommet that you use and that helps push it through but it'll kind of just come out in this area almost by your gas pedal but then i just routed it you know just right along to our dash here and at this point we can take the rest of our harness start to get it hooked up to that power wire and set up our on and off switch so this end here this is our power wire that came from the engine compartment and all these connections that we have to make will have pre-attached terminals and stuff. So everything just plugs in. But what I did in the kit, they're going to give you maybe a two foot piece of wire that has these bullet connectors on it, red and black. It's an extension. I did use that extension. So plug red into red, black into black, really straightforward. This will eventually route towards the uh, back seat of our truck. But while we're right here, if you take the other harness that they give you, it's a big bundle of wires. One of the ends is going to have uh, three terminals on it like this. All right. And that gets hooked up to our switch. So I mounted up the switch bracket that they give you um, and push the wires through it. With that bracket, there's a, on the bottom side of the dash, there's a seven millimeter head screw. I just loosened that up, slid the bracket in and, and tightened it down. And that's how we're gonna mount up our switch. So these ends here, those are gonna get plugged into the switch. Switch is gonna have three terminals. Two of them will be silver, and then one will be a brass colored. I'm gonna take the black wire, push that onto the brass colored one, and then the red wires onto the silver terminals. Don't really matter uh, what one there. 
I'm not gonna push this in and lock it into the bracket just yet. I'll do that once we verify everything works. In case we need to get in here, it'll be much easier. So there's also gonna be, so when we ran these up, there's another black wire that kind of tapers off and has a, a terminal on it that we need to ground. And I did that right here in this area. Uh, thankfully, there's a factory ground stud right here. And so I just removed that nut with a 10 millimeter, put the terminal on it and, and tighten it back down. I should mention too, when we're routing these wires and, and whatnot, you are gonna have to remove these threshold pieces um, here and there to, to give you access to all that. And so these literally, if you just get underneath of them, they just unsnap. Um, you know, nothing really to it. That's a look at the clips holding it in place. If you need to, you can always get a plastic trim tool or a, a flathead screwdriver and just kind of carefully help it along the way. But usually they come apart pretty easy. So I uh, just wanted to mention that. That said though, we can uh, start doing some routing. So here's where our extension that we use for our power wire plugs into the main harness. Just like the other one, you know, it snaps together. And then the rest of our wiring is going to just continue along towards the back of the truck. So when you're routing your wires back, you know, once you get to about the center pillar or the B pillar, um, you can hook up your door sensor. That way you can run your, the wires that come off it at the same time. So this is a sensor. You're going to have one of these on each door and they're just, just going to have sticky tape on them. And you'll just put these right underneath the um, striker here, right? And the strike plate. It'll clean off real good. They give you some rubbing alcohol, you know, straightforward. Stick it on there. Stick this up here. You can kind of just peel your weather stripping off. And underneath this foam protector, there's a connector that's going to come off that um, sensor. And in the kit, you're going to get two extensions that look like this. So you'll maybe a couple feet long, and they'll have this end on, on either end of them, red and black. You're going to use these extensions for driver side front door this is a passenger side front door but um, you know really straightforward that's going to plug in you can take this end continue to route that back uh, along with your main harness here in the back um, you know you pop this plastic piece off there's our harness coming through this is our extension from our front door sensor you're going to plug that into the connector that has the uh, yellow and orange wire so you know nothing to it and then our harness is going to continue to route almost towards the passenger side um, with one exception. One of the wires coming off of it will kind of start to split. One of the wires is going to have to get hooked up to our back uh, driver door uh, sensor. So just like the one we did in the front, I just push that up and set up our sensor there. Let's see if we can't get this off here so we can take a better look at the connection. That's it, and they all plug in the same. You know, we don't use an extension or anything on this one, uh, but one you wanna plug in back here will be the connector with the purple wire as well as the orange wire. So the other two connectors remaining where your harness splits um, these will have to go outside the truck. So one will go to the running board and the other one will go to your LED. So there's actually, um, I don't know what you call this, a knockout almost, a factory knockout. Um, and it's wide open underneath. And so I took a step bit uh, and drilled out an opening large enough for the included grommet to seat in nicely. Uh, you know, you don't want to put the grommet in first and then try to push your connector in, sir. It just doesn't really work well. So slide that grommet over these two connectors one at a time. And then we can feed those wires down and pop that grommet into place. That way they don't get scratched up on the, on the bare metal there. Underneath the truck, here's where those two wires are going to come out through that grommet. All right, and like I said, these will get plugged into the running boards. So the connector we drop down that has a red and black wire, that'll get plugged into the wires coming out of a running board. 
and you can't mess this up. You know, they only go in one way. So uh, if it, you know, don't, don't force it in if it's not wanting to, to pop right in there. And then the uh, wire that we dropped down with the brown wires, that's gonna get connected to the uh, LED light. So I went ahead and uh, you know pulled all the slack out of the lines and used some zip ties to keep it up high and tight and secured. And then uh, you know where our grommet is, I took some sealer and blobbed it up there real good. That way we keep uh, moisture and everything from entering our cab. Now we're on the passenger side of our truck, all right? And if you remember, I said you're gonna push the rest of that harness over towards the side under the carpet. So it comes, uh, comes on over, and we'll have several connector ends. The first one we're gonna deal with is this one here. So it'll run up, and just like the other doors, it's gonna get connected to our door sensor. And so for the passenger rear door, you're gonna use the uh, connector that has the white and blue wire on it. And then essentially just like the other side, we have two very similar connectors um, that we ran outside to our running board and our LED. So we use that same technique, drilled the hole out, used a grommet, pushed this through and hooked them up the exact same way that we did on the other side. So more towards the middle of our truck, there's gonna be kind of where all the wires come together from our harness and turn into a big connector. I have that running up, all right, and I'll lower our carpet down here. And where our carpet kind of is cut from the factory there, that's where I have our harness coming up. All right, and so just one big connector and that's gonna get hooked up to this control box here. So it just plugs right in one way, and that's really all there is to it. Um, eventually, I'll probably use a zip tie or, or some, uh, some type of strap or something and secure it to our carpet kind of underneath the seat out of the way. But I wanna make sure everything works first before you know I, I permanently or pretty much permanently mount it down. So last but not least, we have one more final connection. And this is for our passenger front door sensor. So very, very similar to the other side. Our harness there, you have a green wire and a gray wire that goes into a connector. Um, this is gonna be for that passenger front. Take that other extension, plug that in. That extension will run up to the door just like we did on the other side. So on our front door, just like all the others, got our sensor on there. And here's where our extension comes in and plugs into it. At this point, we can set up our magnets. And these are gonna go on your door jam on each door. And you wanna position these in a way to where they're gonna line up with the door sensors uh, that we installed uh, whenever the door is closed. So, you know, just eyeball it. Don't permanently attach these just yet. You know, they just magnetize right to the door. We're gonna set up all four doors like this. Uh, that way we can, you know, check and make sure they're properly aligned before we uh, permanently attach them. To test everything, we're gonna need power. So at this point, we can take our fuse and put it into position. At this point, you wanna make sure that the switch is turned on inside of the truck and you want to go through each door and open it, make sure it comes down, and close it. Take a second, make sure that comes up. And I'm going to do that for every single door. So I know the driver's good. This one is probably, probably good as well. And once you verify that, then we can permanently attach it. So what I did, before I took the magnet off, I just took an ink pen and just lightly traced around it to hold its position. And then they gave you some two-sided sticky tape, you know, Stick one side of the magnet and deliberately line this up because the magnet's strong. It'll pull out of your hand if you're not careful. Go ahead and stick that into place. I verified all of our doors are, you know, working as they should and then getting the running boards to come down. And uh, finally, you know, we can pop our switch back into place. This just snaps right into our uh, bracket there. Get that done, kind of tidy up all of our wiring and, and uh, clean everything up. 
And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Aries motorized running boards on our 2022 Chevrolet Silverado 2500.